Hello, 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 hello. Hello, hello, hello. hello. <laughs> yeah, I need her to start me up, I think. Hello, hello. What's it up, really? Different is it Jesus answers so it starts here. Yeah, Jesus answered, that's right. Man does not live by bridle, I think it's the same, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it's the same. So it's to be on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. So you can read it. It's it's David and he's good. Yeah, so, okay. yeah, no problem. Can read Lovely. It Thank you. Nice so I'll it. go and tell him
Good morning, everyone, and a very warm welcome to you, whether you're here in the building or whether you're joining us online. It's great that you're joining with this, this act of worship. Um, we especially want to think of our, our friends um, who are in a, in a paddock <laughs> at Muddy Church. Um, very muddy, I'm sure it'll be this morning because it's, uh, it's a bit wet out there, isn't it? So uh, we think of them as we know they'll be thinking and praying for us too. I commend the activities in the notices, which you will have either received by email or picked up at the door. Uh, there are some copies left if you want to take one home. Um, I commend those activities for your prayer and support where you can. Uh, we're delighted that we're continuing with the Lent theme, and it's being led by Lorraine and Tim in here. And if you choose at the appropriate time, Tim will tell you when. Um, to go through to the Century Hall worship. Um, that will be led by Stuart and Anne. So we look forward to wherever we are, whether we're at home, on holiday, uh, or watching on catch-up, or in the building, uh, we, we pray that God will really bless us. And I'll hand over to, uh, I think it's to Tim first. Oh, Lorraine. Lorraine, hand over to Lorraine. Thank you. Thank you, Jackie. So today is the fifth Sunday in Lent, and as Jackie said, we're following the theme uh, worship in the wilderness. And today we'll be thinking about a truth-speaking journey. So let's pray. Truth-speaking God, we may come to you dry, discouraged, feeling frail or powerless, but we come believing that you have the words of eternal life. Speak to our dry bones. May your word and your spirit give us life and empower us to speak truth into this world you love. Amen. Now our first song is one that I think most of you will know pretty well by now because we've been singing it throughout Lent. You lead us through the wilderness.
Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that we can come together this morning to praise and worship you, however we're feeling, whatever problems we're facing. By your Holy Spirit, help us to love you and worship you as we should, and help us to support and encourage each other. In this season of Lent, we remember that in preparation for Jesus' years of ministry, you led him into the wilderness, and he went without food or drink for 40 days. We thank you that we can trust you to provide us with everything we need and more. We remember that when Jesus was in the wilderness, he was tempted by the devil and resisted that temptation. And we're so sorry that we often fail to resist, that we do things that we shouldn't, don't do things that we should. We put our own needs before the needs of others. We ask your forgiveness for all these things in the knowledge that if we are truly sorry, you will forgive us. We lift our prayers to you in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. And we'll say together the prayer that Jesus taught us, the words on the screen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is from the, the book of Ezekiel. It's a very well-known story about the Valley of Dry Bones. So Tim is going to tell it to us in a slightly different way. So this is a very exciting story. Uh, it was written down thousands of years ago on a scroll. And I found the scroll. And I've put it in this to keep it, to protect it. So I'm going to read you this story. If I can get the, uh, the scroll out, there it is. So this is the scroll. But before we start the story, there is a health warning. This story contains images of human bones, which some of you might find disturbing. The people of God were still prisoners in Babylon. That was their home country, but they were far away from it. Sometimes the people were very sorry that they'd not obeyed God. If they had, they wouldn't be prisoners, would they? It was though the nation of Israel was dead. And the people were so sad that they didn't even have any hope that things could change. Ezekiel was a prophet of God. God gave him messages, and then Ezekiel told the messages to the people. And even when they were prisoners in Babylon, Ezekiel preached about God. One day, Ezekiel had a special dream. It was not a sleep kind of dream. It was a special dream sent from God. It was a vision. And in Ezekiel's vision, the Lord took him to a valley full of dry bones. And he set him right down in the middle of the bones. Ezekiel looked at all the bones, and he knew they must belong to people who died a long, long time ago. 
They were all white and dry. Then Ezekiel heard the voice of God. Ezekiel, can these bones come to life again? Ezekiel must have thought to himself about how powerful God was. It would be impossible for bones to come back to life, wouldn't it? But God could probably do it. So he answered the Lord, only you know if they can, which was probably a pretty sensible answer. Then the Lord told Ezekiel to do something very unusual. He told him to speak to the old dry bones, to prophesy to them and tell them the words from the Lord. So, obediently, he prophesied to the bones. The Lord told Ezekiel to tell the bones that he, God, would make breath enter them and they would come back to life. He would put tendons and flesh on the bones and then cover them all in skin. He would make them breathe and be alive. When Ezekiel prophesied to the bones, just as God had said, the bones started rattling and shaking. And soon, the bones started coming together and flesh and skin appeared on them. Ezekiel was amazed to see and hear all of this. Now God's voice commanded Ezekiel again, prophesy to the breath. So, he prophesied to the breath and the bodies started breathing. And then... They stood up. There were hundreds, thousands, live people standing around. A big army. It was amazing. And then the Lord told Ezekiel that the nation of Israel was like the valley of dry bones. The people of Israel felt they were dead because their country was dead and they thought there was no hope. But God can do anything. He can take a bunch of old bones and make an army. He can also take the people of Israel back to the land and make the nation strong again. Now Ezekiel understood the vision. He would keep prophesying to the people of Israel. Someday they would be able to go back to their homes and that gave them all something to hope for. So there were the Israelites, moping about, no hope whatsoever, and God came to them and gave them this miracle to look at. I wonder if you ever feel like dry bones, no hope, feeling under the weather, finding life difficult, wondering where God is. Well, the good news today is God is always there to listen. He's always there to give hope. He's always there to help us. And what happened to the dry bones? What happened to them? They came back to life. And what brought them back to life? It was the Holy Spirit breathed into those bones. So I wonder this morning how we're feeling on a scale of of one to ten, one being the dry bones and ten being full of the Spirit. I won't ask you to put your hands up. But the good news is that God's Spirit is there for us. God's Spirit breathes into us and gives us that new life so we can do work for God and we can have hope for the future. Maybe there's situations in the moment that are pulling us back towards dry bones Maybe it's things we're putting in the way as barriers. But nevertheless, God's Spirit is here with us today and will give us that new life. Now we're going to sing our second song and the words will come up and I wonder if you know these words. 
So this is quite an old song. It's a spiritual song. And it was a song which gave hope to people who were in slavery. And these words are taken directly from the passage we've just heard from Ezekiel. So we're going to have a little bit of a practice singing through. And we need to start quite low down because this is a song which goes up and up and up. And I don't want to get to, let's hope and everybody was singing like this. So I need to start on the right note. Those that know it can sing along. I'm sure you... Them, them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Now hear the word of the Lord. So that's a little chorus bit. And then there's another verse which starts talking about different parts of the body and it's related to that story that we've just heard. So the toe bone's connected to the foot bone and the foot bone's connected to the ankle bone and the ankle bone's connected to the leg bone. Now hear the word of the Lord. The leg bone's connected to the knee bone. The knee bone's connected to the thigh bone. The thigh bone's connected to the hip bone. Now hear the word of the Lord. Them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones, them bones, them bones, them dry bones. Now hear the word of the Lord. And then there's some more words that we'll do. Now you can sit down for most of this because it might be easier for you to point to your knees and your toes when you sat down. But what I want you to do is to point to those parts of the body. We go from the toe, we move up through the body, we end up with the fingers and the shoulders. But the last verse talks about the bones coming together and coming alive. And it says, them bones, them bones, going to walk around. So that's when I want you to stand up if you're in the congregation. And if you're going through to Century Hall worship, I want you to walk through. So we're going to sing that verse until all Century Hall have gone through. And remember, we're going up each time. So, Century Hall, I want you to be quick walking out. <laughs> Otherwise, you'll be here for a long time and very high voices. Okay, so if you follow me on the words, uh, we've had that practice. We're going to have a prayer for the Century Hall people now and then we'll sing through, through the song. Okay. Father God, we thank you that we can come to you in worship this morning. We can look at stories in the Bible from the Old Testament and the New Testament which tell us of your love and your hope and the work of your Holy Spirit. And as we share in different ways, in here and through in the Century Hall, we pray that Spirit would be with us. Amen. Okay. Mm.
Well, I'm not sure I can follow that. But... <laughs> this morning's reading is from Matthew chapter 4, where we hear about Jesus hungry from fasting for 40 days and 40 nights, is tempted by the devil to turn stones into bread. And we begin with Jesus' answer. Jesus answered, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but from every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the highest point of the temple. If you're the son of God, he said, Throw yourself down, for it is written, he will command the angels concerning you, and they will lift, up your, lift you up in their hands, so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and their splendor. All this I will give to you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away from me, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve him only. Then the devil left him, and angels came and attended him. Thanks be to God for his word. We're going to pray together now. The words are on the screen. You please respond with the words in bold where it says all. It's a pretty good clue, isn't it? Father, when I come to you hungry, perhaps it's because I haven't fed properly from your word. Word of God, feed me. There are times when I lose my way. I feel like I'm going round in circles, unsure of my next step. Word of God, lead me. When I'm stuck in repetitive habits, I know that you have more for me outside of this mediocrity. Word of God, shake me. Parts of my heart are cold towards the world you love. Fill me with your compassion. Word of God, break me. The Word of God is living and active, sharper than any double-edged sword. Feed me with your wisdom. Lead me with your love. Shake me with your reality. Break me with your perspective and rebuild me with your Holy Spirit's power. Amen. Our next song reminds us that Jesus is the Word of God and the ways that he spoke and speaks out. You're the Word of God the Father.
So far in Lent, we've looked at different aspects of the journey, journeys in the Bible and journeys in our life. We've had a secret journey, a spirit-led journey, a simple journey, a sorrowful journey, and a sacrificial journey. And today, a truth-speaking journey. You notice they struggle to find another word that began with S, but don't worry, next week there's another S. As we've been discovering, these ideas picture wilderness as a spiritual state in our hearts as we journey on, rather than as a physical journey. But I do wonder whether you feel that the world around you is something of a wilderness. We do live in an increasingly secular society. Christian voices are increasingly marginalised. Christian values may not be shared by your family, friends, work colleagues, or television, websites you look at, social media, whatever that is. It can feel like we're bombarded with temptations to live in ways that are opposite of God's best for us. And we may struggle to resist. Do you ever feel like a lone voice in the wilderness? How can we be inspired by Isaiah and John the Baptist all those years later to be a voice of one calling in the wilderness? Prepare the way for the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. So we're going to think first about wilderness and exile. The Israelites' 40 years in the wilderness was a defining period for them. Perhaps we could even say it was at the centre of their faith. God's faithfulness to them during that time was a theme they would return to again and again. It was a story they passed down through the generations, never to be forgotten. And in times of crisis, they would remember their experience in the wilderness and use it as a lens for seeing how God might act in their present trouble. This was certainly the case when Israel was taken into exile by Babylon in 597 BC. There couldn't have been a greater crisis than to be ripped out of the promised land and ten years later to have Jerusalem and its temple destroyed. God's people were distraught. And yet prophets like Jeremiah, Isaiah and Ezekiel tried to remind them that even in the desert of exile they could still rely on God, the God who'd brought them through the wilderness. In Ezekiel's vision, which Tim told us about earlier on, the people aren't simply hungry and thirsty in a dry, dusty desert in their exile. They're dead. Their bodies have rotted away. Only the bones are left. This is the extent of Israel's despair. And Ezekiel records God's word to him. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Does that image of exile relate to the despair you sometimes feel about the world around you, about our society, the church that's becoming marginalised and ignored? If it resonates at all with you, then you can take heart from what happened through Ezekiel's vision. So next we're thinking about the power of the prophetic word. God calls Ezekiel to speak to the dead bones. Ezekiel speaks God's creative, restorative word, and the dead bones come together. Muscles and flesh grow back over them. God tells him to speak again, and God's life-giving spirit comes and brings life to the dead. So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood up on their feet, a vast army. 
The dejected dead people of Israel are resurrected. They become an army, a people who will reoccupy their promised land. God's word and his spirit do what no other power, politician, product or program could do. They bring new and true life. Note that although it was God's work to bring the dead bones together and give them life, he chose to use Ezekiel to speak to them. He wanted Ezekiel to play an important part in the work. And in the same way, he chooses us to play a part in his work. I wonder, is he calling on you to speak out today? If we're looking to bring transformation to the world around us, to our churches, our homes, our workplaces, our pubs, our schools, we need to know God's word and we need to speak it in the power of his Holy Spirit. Now this means that we need to read the Bible regularly, soaking ourselves in it, trying to understand it better. It means speaking God's truth in love. It means praying with prophetic faith, speaking out God's word with the trust that it will be effective. It means reminding ourselves of God's promises whenever we get dejected. And as Jesus showed us, it means using God's work, word to respond to temptation. So finally, we're thinking about speaking truth into temptation. When Jesus is led into the desert, it seems that he also understands his 40 days in the light of Israel's 40 years of wandering in the wilderness. When we looked at Deuteronomy 8, in week one, which seems a long while ago now, we saw that the reason God gives for Israel's wilderness wanderings is to teach you that man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of the Lord. Each time Jesus is tempted by the devil, he responds by quoting the word of God. In fact, he even uses scriptures from Deuteronomy to refer to Israel's wilderness testing. So Jesus stands where Israel fell. And in doing so, he shows us Christians, the new Israel, how we also can stand in the face of temptation. We don't have a specific 40 years or 40 days of temptation. For us, each day holds an opportunity to obey or disobey God's best for us. What kind of sins are we tempted to commit in our everyday lives? What truths from God's word can we speak to resist those temptations? As we do this, we're obeying that call of Isaiah to be voices calling in the wilderness. We can be those who proclaim to the world, the grass withers and the flowers fade, but the word of our God stands forever. Shout it louder, O Jerusalem. Shout and do not be afraid. Tell the towns of Judah, your God is coming. I want to finish by reminding you of some of the questions that have come up this morning. Does the image of exile relate to the despair you sometimes feel about the world around you, about our society? and a church that's increasingly marginalised and ignored. Do you ever feel like a lone voice in the wilderness? How can we be inspired by Isaiah and John the Baptist to be a voice of one calling, in the wilderness, prepare the way for the Lord? And what kinds of sins are you tempted to commit in your everyday life? What truths from God's word can you speak to resist those temptations? It isn't just a matter of reading God's word or of learning what it says. Commendable those both are. It's a matter of doing what God tells us. 
doing what God says in the way we live our lives and in speaking it out to those around us. Now a short prayer using some words from the song we'll be singing shortly. Word of God, renew your people. Make us now your living sign. Recreate us for your purpose in this place and in this time. Amen. And now we're going to reflect on what God can do. We're watching a video. Those dry bones get everywhere. In the workplaces and job centres, in the homes and high streets, in the schools and colleges. Those dry bones get everywhere. In the shops and sports arenas, in the places of entertainment, the centres of leisure. Those dry bones get everywhere, sprinkling their lifeless dust, sapping energy and draining hope, confusing minds and sowing discontent. Those dry bones get everywhere, but so does the breath of God. And so does the hopeful life of the Spirit. Gentle and powerful, rushing and meandering, transforming radically and little by little resurrecting, encouraging, stirring, comforting. Those dry bones get everywhere but so does the breath of God. I read a verse from our last, this next hymn as a prayer. The whole song is a prayer, so you may choose to stay sitting. <clears throat> it's a prayer inviting God, Jesus, to use us. Now, some of you may not know this song, so Jonathan's going to play it right through for us before we sing it.
now we come to our prayers of intercession. There will be some slides coming up on the screen if you want to use those to guide your thoughts and reflect upon the words. And there will also be a sung response. Some of you will know the sung response from another song. So we'll start with a sung response and then I'll lead into those sung responses in between each section of the prayers. And these prayers are all thinking about us speaking truth to the world. Come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus, pour out your Spirit, we pray. Come Lord Jesus, come Lord Jesus, pour out your Spirit on us today. So let us pray. Dear God, we pray that you would send your Spirit afresh so we can speak your truth to the world. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, pour out your Spirit, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, pour out your Spirit on us today. Lord, it is easy to speak truth in beautiful places, in your creation, in the valleys, looking to the skies, in the flowers. It's easy when we are speaking truth in beautiful buildings, where we can find you. It's easy when things are going well, in times of plenty, where there is too much for us to eat and drink. Come, Lord Jesus, Come, Lord Jesus, pour out your Spirit, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, pour out your Spirit on us today. But what about places where there is war. This morning we think about how we can speak truth to leaders, to governments, to dictators. And what about speaking truth to those who are suffering? from the impact of bad weather, of drought. Or flooding. We pray for the aid agencies who speak truth through their actions in alleviating the impact of natural disasters. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, pour out your Spirit, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, 
Come, Lord Jesus, pour out your Spirit on us today. And what about those who are homeless? People who are hungry, thirsty, afraid, or alone. We pray for those who put themselves in danger to speak out for the vulnerable. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, pour out your Spirit, we pray. Come, Lord Jesus, come, Lord Jesus, pour out your Spirit on us today. We reflect on our own communities. For those who live in Ashbourne and for those in other villages and towns in Derbyshire, we pray for people we know who are suffering, people in this church. We pray for Anne and for Wendy, and for Liz, and for Rosalind. And in a silence we pray for other people we know in our own community. And we pray this week for the Open the Book team who are visiting four schools with a Bible story, The Unforgiving Servant. We pray for them that they may speak truth through your word to those children and staff. And we join together with the Church Universal as we speak out God's truth against injustice. For places and situations around the world. Again, a moment of quiet whilst we think about particular countries and situations known to us. So may we be agents of change and people of action, hearing Jesus' words of commendation. I tell you the truth, whatever you did for one of the least 
of these brothers of mine you did for me. So Lord, as we go from this place, we pray that we might be people of action, speaking your truth in the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. And so we sing of that witness as we share our last hymn together. You've done very well this morning because this is the only one that's on the board that's in the book. So you've learned four new songs today. Well done. It's Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord. So many people I'd like to thank for helping to get this service going. Um, there's an awful lot of work done beforehand which we're not normally aware of. So thank you especially to those people. To our musicians, if you want to see the band, come tonight to praise. But in the meantime, we've got one musician who played three instruments at different times. Thank you, Jonathan. And thank you especially to, to Tim who stood in because I hadn't got a worship leader on the plant. So Tim offered to do it and he's been brilliant, thank you. So let's say our prayer. Holy Spirit, breathe through us so that we might speak out words of light and life where we see only shadows and death. Send us into this world of exile with the promise of a world renewed and the power of our risen Saviour in whose name we pray. Amen. Amen. And shall we say the grace to each other? The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen.